It's the NFL on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the AFC North. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals. And it comes your way next on Madden Football. It's the NFL on EA Sports, and there you get a look at Paycor Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North, as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. set to go Evan McPherson to do the honors and we are underway from Cincinnati on the return here's Jerome Ford and he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21 yard line so here come the Browns for their first drive on offense and a quarterback a longtime signal caller in the National Football League former Super Bowl MVP Joe Flacco remember when the conversation was is Joe Flacco elite well at one point he was elite enough to not only win a Super Bowl but be named the MVP of that game and for a time one of the top paid quarterbacks in the league not bad for a young man who transferred to Delaware from Pitt while in college this guy has had a great career not many chances now to lead an offense, but still capable if put on the field. And he'll hope that this is not a sign of what's in store as he has to fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Again, they turn to Ford. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. That's good for a Cleveland first down at 11-yard pickup. Good sign here early. Everybody on offense there up front in the backfield in sync on that play. So much talk about what do you do to neutralize home field advantage? Well, teams that run the football effectively, they often have a way of neutralizing it in a big way when they have those types of runs. Flacco's throw taken in by Cooper here. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that's going to bring up second down. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. This is Ford. It's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. The medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. From the gun, Flacco. And he's going to dump this off to his running back, Hunt. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and that'll make it second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. They'll run for the 
first time with Kareem Hunt. Oh, that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. This rushing attack sure looks pretty effective here on this opening drive. Yeah, they're finding gaps with very little problem right now. If this is going to consistently be this way throughout the game, there's going to be some adjustments made on the defensive side of the ball. On first down, they go right back to Hunt to the 27-yard line. They'll come up on a second and seven from the 27. Out of the gun, they run it with Hunt. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. Can we just take that run and turn it into a kind of a clip and save? Because that tells you everything you need to know about this drive. They've been moving the ball awfully well. Play number nine now on this pretty long opening drive, but this is third down. Play action, Flacco. He's got his target, that's complete. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Uh, that's a big conversion there on third down, and this has been a great opening drive. You know, at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Flacco looks to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Amari Cooper, a five-yard touchdown. And the Browns will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. Right off the bat, they start with a very solid, methodical 10-play drive. And you know me, I tend to look at things from the defensive side. They're coming off the field gassed right away. We're in the first drive of the game. So it's not just what happened, but think of the emotion you carry into a game, then double it with getting a 10-play drive put on you and points scored. They're pretty tired right now. Extra point good by Hopkins, and that makes the score 7-0. The touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And they're brought out by the former Washington Husky, undrafted back in 2019, Jake Browning. Every time he leads his team out, there's no questioning. He's put the work in to earn his place in the NFL. There's no shortage of stories we've heard throughout his career about the effort he puts in to be in this spot. And that motivates everybody on his team. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. To throw Browning. He's going to have the hook up here to chase. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Now Browning. And the catch made. It's Tyler Boyd. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. Chase the motion man right. Oh, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. 
He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. He did a fine job there not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 30. And we got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Here's Browning. Slam pass to Bowie. It'll go as a gain of four. And this will wind up being a third and three. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Back to throw. Browning. That is caught. Cool. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Looking to throw. Browning. This is caught. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. This duo locked in. 14 yards there and a first down. So they gave up the early touchdown. This has been a pretty good response. Nice drive taking it down first and goal. And I know all the cliches jump in, right? Don't get away from your game plan too early. Make sure you're settled down. Don't panic. But it's all true, isn't it? Because otherwise, you get out of what you plan to do during the game, and it's still early. Don't get crazy because you gave... And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Joe Mixon punching it in from a yard away. And the Bengals respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of a season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Seven-seven here as the kicks away. Taking it about the one. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense 
They just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. So from the 26-yard line, here's second down and eight. Now Flacco. And that's off the mark, incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And that will be incomplete. Spot after taking one on the chin to begin this game. Give up a first drive touchdown, go back out on defense, and completely shut them down to force a three and out. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. Charlie Jones deep for Cincinnati. A 47-yard punt, maybe a couple on the return. And the Bengals take over first and ten. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. There's some guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the ball. Uh, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. To throw again on second down. Browning, he finds his man complete. It's Hudson. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. Operating from the gun, Browning. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. Again, get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. Here's second and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Well, Zadarius Smith there getting in and bringing him to the ground. In every game, we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them, and they get their first sack of the contest. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. Back to throw, Browning. Looking deep here for Chase. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. I love those corners who could not only cover, but don't mind getting a little physical as well. How about the coverage on that play, knocking that pass away? So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Browns will take over first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. 
And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now Flacco. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. 10 yards on the pickup. It's second and inches at the 41-yard line. And his throw here is incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big-time, spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. Flacco to throw here on third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. A busy first quarter. His third catch of the afternoon is a first down. Well, they've certainly gotten him involved in this first half, and on third down, they looked his way again. And what a delight for his quarterback to find him and keep the drive moving. Once more, it's Flacco. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. From the 47, it's second and five. Handoff up the middle, Hunt. Sheds off the tackle, and he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. These two teams all tied after one. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. How about this? They'll try the option. Left side. Down right around the 25. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Here's Flacco. He's got the connection to Moore. So the completion good for just three. And it brings up third and five now. Here's Flacco. strong and now it's fourth down that's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football knowing full well he's got a man coming his way full steam and he broke that one up Hopkins kick is good and they take the lead here now at 10 to 7 so the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, and the net result, three points. Take your disappointment and put it aside. Nine plays, yeah, they want to end up in the end zone with a touchdown. I get that. But sometimes those nine-play drives pay dividends later with another nine-play drive that culminates in a touchdown when they wear down a defense. Following the main field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. This taken in right around the goal line. 
And he won't get this to the 20 yard line as he's down at the 19. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Browning. He gets this one to Boyd. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. He's forced out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. A handoff running left. Mixon. A beautiful fake. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Seven yards on the carry, make it third and four coming up. Off the play fake, Browning. And that is taken in by Boyd. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yeah. thought he was trying to get Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not only. He came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Looking to throw. Browning. A uh, quick throw there he is incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. Now a second and ten. Inside handoff to Mixon. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. This offense so far on third down, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be third and six. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Now here's Brad Robbins now. That'll go as a punt of 42, seven on the return. And they will take over first and 10. There's the versatile back, Kareem Hunt, getting set with the rest of this offense for the next drive. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter, been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. They will start this drive with four. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Zachary Carter there, the one to make the tackle. A gain of five brings up second and five at the 27 yard line. Ball on the 27. Here's second and five. On the ground, it's Ford. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. takes it inside the 40. 
He's able to rip off 32 on that one. It's a first down. They only needed a couple, but the blocking was good. And, of course, you can't tamp him down when he gets past that line of scrimmage. No, and guess what? Not only were they physical at the point of attack, they executed so well. That's what you have to do in short yardage situations. Everyone has to be in the right spot taking on a defender to give him the chance that they did, and he took full advantage of it. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Now throw right side here, gonna be incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's gotta be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. They run with Ford. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a gain. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. Hopkins' kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Mm -hmm. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50 plus yarders seem easy for some reason. The following the made field goal for three Hopkins now to kick it off. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They go play action here on first down. He will find his man chase complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Back to throw, Browning. This one caught downfield by Higgins. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 39 yards there, a big one. Despite writing it down in my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Mixon with a first down carry. He will push his way down to about the 14. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Looking to throw. Browning over the middle complete. It's Boyd. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. It'll be a gain of 5. And now it's third and 3. 
They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And the Bengals are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. I know it was a game, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good. And he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. Joe Mixon with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Bengals are an extra point away now from moving out in front. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And with it, his guys take the lead here by a point. to the touchdown. McPherson on to kick this one away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. A look at the running back. The man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not through any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen and put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complementary football and get that passing game going as well. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves them with two to go on second down. Now a second and two. They'll keep it on the ground. It's four, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say, play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now, defense sold out for the run, worked out well. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. From the 42-yard line, here's the second and eight. Now a handoff up the middle. Four and give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Two. 
Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Third and three. Passing play. Flacco. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a big conversion there on third down because they did not want to give the ball up here late in the half. They'd love to take the clock all the way down and score. This will definitely help the cause. First down now, but that clock rolling. Flacco looks to throw. Deep ball for Goodwin. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. Second and 10. Setting up to throw Flacco. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine, and they need 10 yards out and on third. He finds his man complete. That's four. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Would have been right at about a 52-yard field goal try, but no, they are going to go for this thing on fourth down. They're going to try it. Here's Flacco. Quick slant, caught by Moore. And he's going to pick up the Browns' first down as the defense couldn't come up with a big play. In fact, they got six more than they needed, a gain of eight on fourth and two. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. And again, it's Flacco to throw. Over the middle, Amari Cooper, it's complete. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. Here's second and three. From the gun, Flacco. This is the tight end, the Joku. And the Browns are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. They go pass again with Flacco. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Marquise Goodwin as the first half is winding down. And the Browns have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. That's one of those long drives where not only do you score, but you really tire out the defense, too. That's a great point, because now they've been on the field for a long time. Them going to the bench, trying to make adjustments, trying to figure things out, but they'll do so fatigued. Hopkins with the extra point, and that'll make this a six-point game. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The 
the Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a couple of high-octane offenses getting it done in the first half. Both teams had no problems moving the football. And you'd have to think, the team whose defense shows up in the second half is going to be the one who walks out of here with a victory. The Bengals with work to do in this third quarter, but they'll get the football first as we are back underway. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And the Bengal offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. To throw Browning. He's got his man, that sample the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That one goes for 30 yards. Well, you had all halftime to think about what you wanted to do to start the second half, and they came out with a big one. Does that not beg the question? What was happening in the other locker room at halftime? Was that the one play they didn't cover as a possibility? Because they just gave up a big, big game. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and 10. Now Browning. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Mixing up the middle. Good move at the 30. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. They'll get 13 yards for the second play in a row. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away. And he's going to go down here, a sack. They push him back to the 34. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. So second and long and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Here's Browning. This throw is going to be incomplete. Tyler Boyd, the intended receiver, and that'll make it third down. Back to throw. Browning. Up a first 
first and goal. And that seemed to me to be all about trusting your receiver. No doubt about it, because when he put that ball in the air, I will guarantee you everyone who's watching this game right now thought, that's up for grabs. But this is a lot of practice time. As you mentioned, a ton of trust, and he knows how good his guy is. So to him, it wasn't up for grabs. To him, it was a big play waiting to happen. Looking to throw. Brown to the goal line, but it's incomplete. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Mixon. Diving for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown. And those three rushing touchdown games in this league, you know darn well, those are hard to come by. They're becoming even harder to come by as the years go by, aren't they? Isn't that the truth? It doesn't matter what you do in terms of game planning. You may be a run-first team, but you're running against an NFL defense. That's some of the biggest, fastest, best athletes on the planet. Hard to do. Cherish that moment, even as he's eager to add to that total. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that will put them on top here in the third. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From his end zone, here comes Jerome Ford. And he returns this to the 22. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. Throwing on first down, but this one lines up to be incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Flacco. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Logan Wilson, the one who got in there and dropped him to the ground. So the opening drive of this third quarter, they're trying to set the tone for the second half. And without a doubt, they did exactly that. I've known coaches who have said the first five minutes of each half are so important to do exactly what you said, which is set the tone. I've also heard coaches talk about the first five plays. Let's go out and be aggressive right off the top. That's exactly what they did. Under pressure, and they got to him again. Hendrickson showing off his pass rush repertoire that time. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense. Six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing. The O-line coach will. The Browns send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now a fair catch taken just across midfield, maybe by a yard or two. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. A very good starting field position for the Bengals here as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. Off play action. Browning. Over the middle. That's caught by Chase. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 23 yards on the play. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes 
Teams get too concerned about the deep ball. They leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Now a play fake here on first down. Out to the left. He's got Sample there. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll bring up a second and short. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. On second down, here's Mixon. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. 46 yards for him on the ground now and three touchdowns to go along with it. But they've certainly been successful throwing it around in this game. That's allowed them to move the ball on offense. But I've got to tell you, to watch them run the football and successfully, I'm not taking sides. But to see the ball in a running back's hands, oh, that's football for me. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. So illegal touching, Charles. If you set foot out of bounds as a receiver, you can't be the first to touch it. You nailed it on that one. You've got to be mindful of the sideline. And second and 10, he'll look to throw again. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Back to throw. Browning. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. So on fourth down, on is Evan McPherson and the Bengal field goal unit. And this one will be a 29-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good. And that'll move their lead up to four now. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Cleveland offense making their way out. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. The run on first down gets him a couple up to the 27. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Flacco. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Trey Hendrickson able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And that's his second sack in this one. And you just can't ask a defensive end or an edge rusher to play any better than what we're seeing right now. And partner, it's still just the third quarter. I'm thinking he's not done yet. Even if he's not getting the sack, he's bringing a lot of pressure to the pocket. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop him here on third down. Now Flacco. And he knocks 
the ball away and it falls incomplete. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw, unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. The Browns send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Here's Jones on the return. Call that 49 yards on the punt. They do get seven back on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Ready to go on offense. Out come the Bengals. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. And Strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. They went counter there offensively, and a couple of the defenders were on skates for a second. They certainly were, and you know what offensive linemen love about the counters and the misdirections? Sometimes you don't even have to block the defender. He can run himself out of the play if he doesn't read his keys properly. On first down, Browning. This one hauled in by Sample, and he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 12 yards that time in the Cincinnati first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. Second and nine. Looking to throw. Brown and down right around the 32-yard line. Four yards on the pickup. They'll come up facing third and five. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Miles Garrett picks up his second sack of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They'll start this drive out on the ground. Up to the 20. From the 20, here's the second and eight. Here's Flacco. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. Those are the ones you dream of as defenders. I think if he gets eyes on the ball a little bit earlier, he might come away with it. Instead, it's going to wind up as just an incomplete pass. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. He finds his man complete. That's Ford, and that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 
22, and he needed plenty more. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a fourth down? And Bohorquez on to punt as he gets it away. Fair catch signal for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Second down and six now. Again, it's Mixon. And he'll get about three up close to the 35. They'll come up now third and three. Back to throw. Browning. Complete. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? Yeah, they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. The Bengals bring out their punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fair catch called, it's taken. turn and out will come the offense as they take over and the football going back over now to the Cleveland Browns and our games hit a little bit of a lull here a little bit of a snag punts on back-to-back -back drives and old school coaches don't necessarily mind that didn't turn it over right didn't create a big play for the other team right now what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position and that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. Now second and nine. It's the Browns with a deficit they're trailing, but with the football here to start the fourth. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. Here is third down and four. Here's Flacco. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches. And they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space. Let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. 
So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Moore, the motion man. They'll run on first down. It's Ford. And he's got it to about the 40. Now a second and six. Now Flacco. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. forward for about four second and six second and six they'll keep it on the ground it's four and for one of the few times here today this one's not going to go anywhere no gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. I would think as a play call, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was, because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stopped that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. On third down, it's four. That he won't quite make it. He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and run for it. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. Kareem Hunt stops short of the sticks, and the Bengals will get the football back. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. Throwing to start the drive. Brown avoids the target and he has it over the middle. He'll go down as a gain of six and it'll be second down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows He's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on him. Really well done. Running left, it's Mixon. Good footwork at the 30. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. 73 yards rushing here for Mixon. He's got a first down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount. And he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Throwing on first down. Browning out of his hands quickly to Higgins. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. Quick slam cut by Chase. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. 
The ball was tipped and fell incomplete, but it was tipped up in the air, so the guys on defense, they had to feel like that was a big opportunity, and it was missed. They needed a play to help turn things around a little bit. Ball's in the air. Can they rally to it and get it? On that play, they weren't able to. They'll take the ball, bat it away, but boy, they missed a big chance there. And he is going to have the Bengals first down, maybe by about a yard as they find a way to convert on third and inches. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscle all over the field and getting pushed down it. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. So five yards here, five on the play, and it's second down. Off the bootleg, Browning. He gets this with the boy. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 25-yard line. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time, you wait for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Throw left side complete to Chase. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Second down and a yard. Operating from the gun. Browning over the middle. Oh, no, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, partner, here's where team football gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field. And they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. So the fumble recovery, now Flacco to throw. And he's got the speedster Goodwin. And he'll be taken down, but they've got this one up to the 35-yard line. 23 yards, the final tally. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. He's got Njoku over the middle. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. From the 44-yard line, here's second down at a yard. Flacco's throw there, complete. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Flacco will take to the air again. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender, but the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. They come up now on second and two. Setting up to throw Flacco. Now, a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Mm -hmm. 
Well, this crowd into it now. Third and two. Now a handoff up the middle. Four. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he gets it down to the 32. And good yardage there on first down because sometimes all you need to do on the screen is get one key block. That might set your man free, and that was pretty good pursuit to the football defensively, or it could have gone for more. Here comes second down. Now Flacco. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his home. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Flacco. And that will be incomplete as well. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Another big play in a game that's had plenty of them. Fourth and two. They're going to try it. Here's Flacco. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and this 10-play drive winds up yielding nothing. So that's the second time this game they've given it up on fourth down. They're now one for three on fourth down conversion tries. But they must feel good about what they're doing, right? They continue to go for it on fourth down. Give the defense a lot of credit, though. They've stopped them two out of three times. Usually, you have fourth down plays that you have dialed up and ready to go and you think are going to be successful. Not so far in this game. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here, second and 11. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Still needing 10 yards. Now it's third down. to throw Browning. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And this will be caught at the 30. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, but he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road. 
but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Well, that second half, Charles, a little bit different from the first. Not only did we have the lead change after intermission, but they were able to pitch the shutout in the second half and get an impressive victory. And what's the old expression? That's not quite how I saw it playing out in my head. You know they didn't expect this at all. As you mentioned, went into the half of the lead. Losing the game is one thing. Getting shut out in the second half, that's a surprise.